Biden began its hearings this week to investigate how prepared the U.S. was against possible terrorist attack prior to September 11th. You've heard what I think came out of it. Anybody else have any uh, other things they want to say? Well, we try Hopefully. to blame Bush. He was in the office for 10 months. Clinton was there for eight years. But even Clinton. But, but he had bigger things in his mind. Mona Lewinsky's ass. <laughs> but don't you think blaming either one of them is crazy? It was Bin uh, Laden. I do. Yeah, no, because it's a, it's really the airline's fault because they, they like uh, Israel Airline, whatever that's called. No, but, no, yeah, they have cheap flights. And I think that they, uh, like, they had security, so we didn't have security because we don't want security. So really, it's our fault. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to be inconvenienced. You know, I'm a Bin Laden, and I thought the airlines did a great job <laughs> carrying us out of uh, America after 9-11. They gave me a kosher meal. I was very satisfied. So you're one of the Bin Laden family. I'm one of the Bin Laden's, yes. You can't, you, here's the thing, you can't win because had, had they gone after Bin Laden and killed him, and then the attacks uh, right. occurred anyway, people would be screaming, look, you killed him, you brought the wrath of Al-Qaeda on this country, and then if the attacks never came, they still would have been saying that the attacks were racially motivated or anti-Muslim or, you know, anti-diabetic. There's no way to actually do that right. and win, because people want to bellyache no matter what, so you there's no way to present so it. So you think that, go ahead. I was saying intelligence failures are epidemic in this country. We didn't see the Japanese coming, we didn't see... <laughs> The British didn't see the uh, Falkland Islands getting attacked. Sharon Stone thought the practice was a good career move. <laughs> These things Mistakes, happen. exactly. You're Bush, right. I disagree with you. Bush should have seen it coming. Because he, Bush was, <laughs> the, his father is in bed with the Bin Laden family. <laughs> Not necessarily in bed, maybe bent over a dumpster in a back alley with him. <laughs> but he has been paid very handsomely by the Carlisle group. And when I say handsomely, I mean his checks have an ascot and a smoking jacket. They should have seen it coming. I agree with him, whatever yeah. he said. Oh, come on. Nobody yeah. can see anything coming. Why are we blaming ourselves? I think you get a good point. You know, we're like the uh, girl who's being molested by her uncle for 10 years. It's not our fault. You can't it's see it coming. It's the uncle's fault. Well, 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 wait, you know, like Kim would say, you know what? Your uncle had a right to molest you. He had a short skirt on. That's what you'd be saying. Wait, I, I did it once. They, they, they did it on March 11th, like the 11th. and the, You can't stop these terrorists. You just don't travel. Look. Well, that, that doesn't affect your career. I know. That's why I stay in town. Well, not to get off the subject, but, you know, you'd be surprised a lot of times your niece does wear a little skirt and you don't, you don't intend for things to happen, but it's not always the uncle's fault. But, so yes, was that you're going to have no, that is a good point. Don't you feel sometimes like everyone, like when everyone said root causes, the first thing I thought was, oh, it's like saying to the rape victim exactly that. It's like saying, oh, you were asking for it with your lax immigration policies. You know what I mean? Right. It's kind of like blaming, uh, you know, blaming the, the person that got attacked. That's actually, that was sort of the point I was trying to make. That's what upsets me is that they were foreigners. Mine too. Yeah. These are the kind of things that are important in our little world. Now listen, <laughs> the Supreme Court is considering the case of Larry Hebel. A Nevada cattle rancher was arrested for refusing to reveal his name or show an ID when police stopped him. Now, aside from the name is Hibble, nobody wants to say the name when it's Larry Hibble, but... It sounds like a blue collar. What do you think? Should you I have think to say that, uh, your name when the cops go with well, your name? Well, first of all, I just think the guy had a fight with his girlfriend, so he's already pissed. The cop had a hard on. The guy probably didn't want it. He came up, said, what's your name? First of all, the cop can just... Can he just run his plates? The cop was just being a, you know, a douche, whatever I can say on air, you know what I mean? And uh, it's like when a, it's like when a but cop... But you being a douche, no, like being a douche for saying I'm not telling you my name No, too? it's like when a cop comes up and says, uh, uh, you know why I stopped you? It's like, oh, you smelled the pot in the glove compartment? You know what I mean? You're not supposed to... It's like, let them do their job. Right. Run the plates. But I what if you're walking? You should be able to, you should have to tell them your name. Especially in this day of terrorism, I mean... You know, we, should, not Arab, we you know? should make it tough on the cops to figure out who's who. But then again, if you see like an Arab guy hanging out at Grand Central at two in the morning, we already know his name. It's Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> but is that like, is that how Great we show. that snide as a group? Like that's our idea of assertiveness and individuality. Like the cops stopped me and I didn't tell him my name, man. Like is that our idea of being like individuals and living? It's ridiculous. Who cares? Tell the cop your name. Your name is no what one. Could, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I said, what could you possibly you do illegally? You never got in a fight with your girlfriend and you didn't want to, you just didn't want to talk to people. When I used to yeah, be with the cops, my name was John Doe. They would arrest me. But even when you said John Doe, then they still arrested you and put your name down as John Doe. Oh, that was time, a good point to make. Well, it's true. <laughs> and one time I got arrested, I swear to God. One, this is true. I go to, uh, I'm in the bullpens downtown, and then after two days, I forgot I was drunk when they arrested me, so I forget I'm named John Doe. So then they're calling your case up, you know? So I'm sitting in the cell, me and all the brothers sitting there. They go, John Doe, John Doe. So finally, oh yeah. So I start walking through all the black dudes trying not to touch you. And this one big brother goes, John Doe, yo man, where you from? Main Street, any town USA? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was Chris Rock doing in jail? <laughs>
Oh, I think, you know, I was raised in a very liberal household. My mother used to, instead of reading to me uh, Cat in the Hat, she read my Miranda rights and then gave me a cavity search, and I missed those. But I, the people committing I the crimes, things, but... the, committing, the people committing the crimes, I watch cops, yeah. they, their faces, they have no facial features. That's, those are the people we should round up. Those are dragging victims. The, pe they, the people without faces. But do you think, let's just go in around, who thinks that you should be forced to say name, who thinks you shouldn't? You should. You should. No. You should be able to have to. You, so you should say your name. Fine. I got a question. When's the audience going to get here? <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying the show on a different level. Yeah. Well, not everybody has to be like, They're on a right? different show. No, they are. They're not like They're watching the f***ing with a bunch of hysterical work. people. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, and I could be wrong, he could be right. Either the audience hates the show, which I don't think is true, <laughs> no. or they just kind of are laid back like, yeah, we're yes. enjoying this on a show. As yeah, usual, the caller is right. That's why you wanted a comedy show, paraplegics. <laughs> We'll be right back into the zone. <laughs> oh. Now, speaking of censorship, hip hop activists worldwide, and that means that includes Iceland that uh, yeah, are yeah, outraged yeah. at MTV asked rapper Kanye West to edit his new video, All Falls Down. Here are the lyrics in question. He says, because they make us hate ourselves and love their wealth. That's why shorty's hollering where the ball is at. Drug <laughs> dealers by Jordans, crackhead by crack, and a white man gets paid off all of that. And I saw it last night on Def Jam, providentially, uh, Def Poetry. <laughs> Now, they dropped the word white in white man. Now, what do you guys think about it? Should they have dropped the word? Well, obviously, even if they dropped the word white, we know who they're blaming. They're not blaming the West Indians. Right. <laughs> white, they hate us. I they just hate like, our guts. I, I just like that five white guys are talking about this. Why? We're not allowed to talk about We're, still in, We're still in charge. We're still in charge. That's my point. What are you talking about? Oh, no, I, 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 what? I think, wait, wait, wait. I'm MTV? The, We're I'm in charge. The, you think this opinion on this show is like the prevalent opinion in the media and show business? No, is that no one's even going to bring it up in show business? Because the, the people that are in charge, I'm not saying they're not white, but their opinion is like, oh yeah, sweep it under the rug, don't even talk about this, it's uncomfortable. It's very simple, if you want to be politically correct, instead of white man, he could have just said superior American. <laughs> Holy Jesus, that's racist! I'm going to say Go something ahead. which hopefully can be amusing, Go or ahead. at least f***ing. Hey, 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 skip hey. Let him have it, skip. Now, I forgot my whole Kanye West. Uh, it'll be good. It'll oh, be good. here it is. I know it'll be good. Kanye West, that's not halfway. We're not going to cut most of this shit, I hope. No. Um, <laughs> we go halfway. Oh, really? You want to leave this nonsense in? Half, halfway to hell. Here's what happens. Look at his hair. What happens? <laughs> Kanye. Nothing. Go ahead. Oh. But, uh, here's my go point ahead. on the whole thing. Hey. I will go quit saying go ahead. I want to hear it. Let me go. <laughs> I have my laughing hat on. Kanye West. <laughs> Let him have it, Skip. The bottom line is this. If you read the lyrics of those songs, uh, you will see that he's blaming, he's saying that, yes, drug dealers buy Jordans because the white man gets paid. So even drug dealers are being victimized by the white corporations <laughs> because they buy their Jordans from it. And then he says, they make us hate ourselves, so they buy a lot of products. Like the rest of the world is not filled with white everybody who buys products because we hate ourselves and because advertising makes us all hate ourselves. That's what... I can't take it anymore. That's why they're drinking a... <laughs> that's why they're drinking a gallon of Mountain Dew, because they hate themselves. <laughs> And they're still ripped. That's what pisses me off. I, I, I don't even think white man's an insult. Why is that an insult? You know, if someone says you. No. I noticed. That. <laughs> well, that yeah, that haircut hasn't done much for us. That's a fine compliment. You're a white man. Thank you. And a good day to you too, sir. <laughs> you call a black guy, sir. <laughs> I know Patrice was throwing around the word cracker yesterday, our black friend. They didn't have a problem with that. We all know cracker is the equivalent of <laughs> right? right? Whoa, what? Are we Whoa. still on air? Hey, I, I'm offended. Excuse me. I'm going to get anyway. It's Excuse true. Me, I happen to be, I have some black blood. He's a member of the Bin Laden family. He's a member of the Bin Laden family. Uh, I have black blood. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you got black blood. What do you do, burn a bangle? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> no, I, was, I don't let my children listen to hip-hop music because in my day, we had lyricists, people who James told a Taylor. story. James Tommy Taylor, Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey, Dorsey. who knew that. how to write songs they with lyrics, him. like I want to bust my nut all over my biatch's face. Things that told a story. Not yeah, today yeah, with yeah. the kids. Story. No, I don't 
don't know what they're saying. You're right. It's, when it's an acoustic guitar, it sounds different. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Yeah. Ads for erectile dysfunction and sexual performance products oh. are turning up everywhere. Okay? There's these ads all over the place. What do you guys think? Anyone want to sample? First of all, I got some lovely Viagra. I, big I, boys. I am... Uh, is that real? No, it's an ad. Stupid I'm I don't think... Can I first of all, say... can I say one thing before we start? Yes, dear. This idiot just said, is that real? But go ahead. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I have a giant bottle of Viagra, you... <laughs> Well, you have integrity. You never fake things. That's why I thought it would be real. Because you, you... Oh, quit trying to, again, play false humility so I look like a prick. You do look like a prick. <laughs> Dad, what were you going to say, well, fella? The women in the... <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> First of all, uh, the commercial... Hey, that... dickhead, I was speaking. <laughs> Jesus. Who's the guest here? I saw that kid. I knew that wasn't going to get through. Viagra? I knew that wasn't going to get through. Dickhead Viagra? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go You did come over. The point I was making was... Somebody lean back. I thought that man could jump in. Talk. What, are you going to talk or not? I'm going to jump in again. What's the hurry? Because it's a half hour. No. It's true. You don't understand. Brennan here has a bad temper, too. Not as bad as Nick, but he's pretty close. Bad temper and a bad had barber. more little fights in that stupid hallway <laughs> than like a drunken <laughs> Russian customer from Brighton Beach. What'd you Go say? Ugh. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. The, uh, the research that you gave us, the articles about a woman complaining because the ads were too explicit with these, this Viagra right. and all this other stuff, which I disagree. Have you seen the ad for La Vitra? They don't even tell you what it is. It's like a guy throwing a football through a tire swing. <laughs> And he misses, then he takes a couple pills, and the next three go right through it. I don't even, what is that pill for? Is that for guys with inaccurate ejaculations? I don't, I don't, guys, guys trying to get his, guys trying to get his wife pregnant, he's knocking all the lamps and she's running around, I'm open, hit me, I'm on. Boy, that was worth waiting for. It was. Go ahead, slap. I want to make a point. I'm, I'm saying she's everybody else. Oh, so you can no. Speak. It's not that great a point. It was just, um, I take Viagra, and it's not a matter of people like, well, do you need that? It's like, no. Sometimes you just want to punish somebody. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I don't think you need Viagra during sex to punish whoever you have sex with. <laughs> we'll be right back.